within the four days uh, pause, uh, in each day there will be an obligation in each side, an obligation on the Israelis and an obligation on Hamas, making sure that they're going to fulfill those obligations in each day. So in each day we aim to have a number of releases uh, because the number is big. So we try, the, we've managed to get uh, the parties to agree on the releases uh, systematically. In other words, there will be an organized schedule allowing the releases in each day, and each party is quite familiar now with their obligations. Ten hostages released on day one, for example? Of a minimum. A minimum of ten. Who will be released? So this agreement specifically focuses on uh, civilian women and children uh, in each side, in both sides. And we hope that within the four days, we will be able to uh, complete the release of uh, uh, women and children in both sides, moving to the safe side, uh, away from this war. By the first hours of the agreements, we will be notified of the official list of, uh, of people in each day. And by having that list, we will make sure that we notify either the, uh, the, the the sides, the parties themselves, or even the uh, countries that have their hostages uh, in, in, the, in the Gaza Strip currently. Hamas has said it doesn't have all the hostages and it needs time to get around to gather information about hostages that it doesn't hold and find out where they are. Many have called that just a talking point, a cynical ploy to buy time. The obligation on Hamas on the first day is very clear. They need to provide us with that list. Uh, they've been granted that period of calm, and not only the period of calm, but also preventing any military clashes, a ground invasion, air surveillance. That will provide them with the room to provide us with that commitment. You've described in the language of this deal, you've described it as a truce in the Gaza Strip. And I think that language is really interesting. Um, the use of the term truce, this is by no means a ceasefire. And the fact that this is in the Gaza Strip, the main pillar of which, of course, is clearly the hostage release. What happens as far as humanitarian aid is concerned? What is the commitment on both sides as far as that you know, uptick in aid is concerned? Sure. So this agreement has two major components. The first one related to the release of the hostages, and the second one is related to providing not only a quantity, but also quality humanitarian aid uh, and assistance as needed. One of the most interesting components within that humanitarian aid, Piquet, is the fuel. Mm -hmm. And the fuel has been a debatable issue in the early times of that conflict. Now we've managed to secure fuel being provided for a vital infrastructure such as hospitals and others. The Israelis have been very specific. They have said this is a truce period. Before it starts, hostilities will continue. And very specifically, once this pause is over, the war will restart. Is that useful in negotiations, that sort of language? Uh, our work is not done. We're still going to continue to talk more to the, to the parties, to de-escalate, to seek a longer period of the ceasefire. The Israelis are not talking about a ceasefire at this point. They have categorically ruled out a ceasefire until all hostages are released. And at present, you are not mediating any talks on the soldiers or men being held by Hamas? Well, listen, Becky, the, even the temporary ceasefire was not been considered in the early times by the Israelis. Mm. So we still, we remain hopeful. That, and, and our effort is not going to stop at this level. Uh, our work is not done. We're going to continue working with both sides, hoping that we can secure this bigger objective. If there are families of hostages watching this interview today, families of hostages who are young men of serving age, what is your message about the likelihood that those Israeli soldiers will be released anytime soon? So we're, we're doing everything that we can uh, as soon as the, both parties want to keep uh, uh, seeking uh, Qatar's assistance in mediating, we're going to respond positively to that request. So we know that our mission did not finish, and our work is continuous for, for the better cause. And as you said, our hope is really that we see a period where we can put an end to this war and let the people leave 
and uh, reduce this uh, humanitarian suffering that for the people in Gaza. It was interesting uh, speaking to the lead negotiator and because he also described how difficult these talks have been and will continue to be when you are dealing with two parties who have absolutely no trust uh, in each other at all. Qatar, of course, the lead negotiator on this, alongside uh, Egypt and the US, who have been very involved. And I was told uh, by one diplomatic source very close to the talks that it was when the, the Israeli intelligence chief, David Barnea, who is in um, Qatar, according to diplomatic sources today, and Bill Burns, um, the US uh, CIA chief, it was when they got involved that this was sort of, you know, the momentum for these talks uh, really picked up. But look, nothing is perfect, but what they have, at least in principle, is an opportunity here. And for those families of at least the women and children um, who are in Hamas's hands at present, there is some hope. As I said, we don't know who will be released on day one tomorrow after 10 o'clock in the morning. That's just not clear at the moment. He said those lists, though, are part of the obligation. Every day, uh, Hamas and the Israelis need to put a list on the table so that everybody is clear who it is who will be released that day. And this truce period, of course, can be extended if, if these things go to plan. For every 10 Hamas hostages released, for example, there is the opportunity or the offer of another full day's truce.